Hey guys, so I'm going to be going over some things or some prerequisites to help you be successful in this series. So I'm going to show you kind of some things that I'm going to be doing while I'm going to be coding this um, so that you can more easily follow along and do some of these things if you want to too. So the first thing is, and I'm going to be showing you guys some uh, some kind of shortcuts if you will. So I have my little key caster thing here at the bottom so it's going to show you what key I'm pressing. Um, if you're curious. So first off I'm using Visual Studio Code so that's the editor that I'm using and that's what I'm going to be using the uh, entire series to code. Now you don't have to use this but I would recommend it and a lot of the tips that I'm about to show you um, are specific to Visual Studio Code though I think some editors can also do this. So the first thing I want to show you is one thing I'm going to do, be doing a lot in this series is clicking on stuff and so what I mean by that is if you hold down the command key, and this is probably control on Windows, um, you'll notice that now everything is linkable, like these import statements and whatnot, and I can click on them. So for example, if I would like to see the user entity, I can just click on it, and it takes me to the new file. So it takes me to the file where this user class exists. So I'm going to be using this to just kind of jump across places. Um, and you can even click on, so here's a type right here. So I wanna see like what, what is the value of this type is. I'll click on it and now I can see I'm currently in the declaration file for it and I can see, all right, it has some interesting stuff in here and I can basically just move my way around um, by just holding down the um, command key and clicking on stuff. So that's the first thing. The second thing is autocompletion and now I'm not talking about um, and just when you're typing because I mean that is one so like error response right um, and it auto fills for me what I'm talking about is let's say I don't have an import at the top of it. so let's say I got rid of user right there um, user is going to be red here and so what I'll do is I put my cursor to the right of the word um, and then I hit control space and what that does is it brings up the little menu and now you'll notice when the option says auto import and it tells you where it's coming from. So now I can hit enter and it'll auto import stuff. So I can bring up this window here and import things um, and go up and down with my arrow keys. So that's another thing you'll see me do constantly is if something didn't get imported or I might prefer to import it this way, I'll just go over to the word, go to the end of it, um, and then just control space and then grab that and then you'll notice that it'll auto add the import at the top. So that's super nice. Um, the other thing, I, I added this as just a kind of a fun tip because I'm going through some of the tips. I probably won't do this too much, but if you click F2, um, you can refactor the name of a just a variable in the file. So if I want to call this um, er response instead, um, I can hit enter and I'll go ahead and change um, error response throughout the entire file. I'm just going to undo that. The other thing is um, I'm going to be moving around files and renaming files. Now um, Visual Studio Code just came out with a new feature that I really like and uh, let's say I want to move this, this file for example. So notice how it has a relative path uh, here and here and then other files are probably importing this right so if I were to move this file uh, it would break stuff it would break all these relative imports but Visual Studio Code now is a feature now you have to be using TypeScript 2.9 so make sure you're using that um, in your project and whatnot and so when I move this file so let's say I move it up a directory um, what's gonna happen is a little window pops up and it's like would you like to update um, and basically fix all the imports and I'll say yes and what will happen is it will fix all the relative imports. So now it didn't look like it fixed the ones um, right here but you'll notice it fixes the ones that are using it. So in this file and this file over here um, and we can just click save all if we want to. Um, so now if I move this back it'll then ask us again. It'll be like hey do you want to uh, update the imports and so I'll just keep this window, this window you might see up if I move a file and I'll just say yes to update stuff. Um, but you need to be on the latest Visual Studio Code and have the latest TypeScript to do that. And then also same applies when you rename a file, it'll do the same thing. Um, 
Uh, the other thing in O. Oh, so another thing, if you don't want to be on the latest Visual Studio Code, what I used to use is a plugin called uh, Move TS. So sometimes the uh, moving is a little janky. Like you saw, it didn't update um, the, the relative imports here. Uh, a plugin that I've used in the past is called Move TypeScript, and this works pretty well when I've used it before. It's a little bit slower to actually move things, um, but it I, it's like the actual moving of the relative imports works very well. Um, all right, so next thing is the command palette. So we'll top in over here. All right, so first off, if I hit Command P, um, again, it's probably Control P on uh, Windows you can see all the files um, in your project and you can start typing and you get auto completion so let's say I want to hop to the Redis file I can see all the things that have to do with Redis and I can just do arrow keys to go through these um, so that's one way for me to just switch through um, files now I don't do this too often I'll probably just click on the directory tree um, but that's just one thing you can do the other thing is if you type a caret here um, to start you'll notice there's a whole lot of commands. So I'll probably do this once in a while. Sometimes the TypeScript um, needs to update the TypeScript server. So there is a, a restart TS server, and you can run that. Uh, sometimes I'll also reload the window. So that's how I do both of these things. So just command P to open up this palette, type a caret, and then you could select reload or restart the server. Um, and, and we can just click that right now. You'll notice everything now, now says loading if I look at the types um, until it actually restarts and you notice it now pops up so the restart finished. Um, so that I do occasionally. And then plugins. So here's some of the plugins that I'm using. Uh, first is this colorizer. So this is kind of just an aesthetic thing. So um, you'll notice my brackets have colors. So here and the colors just match up. So yellow there, pink here. It just makes it a little bit easier to match up um, what bracket goes with what and whatnot. So that's what's doing that. It's called Bracket Pair Colorizer. Um, these things won't really matter for this tutorial. Um, we're going to be using some GraphQL. So if you'd like to get um, the syntax highlighting, so let me open up a GraphQL file. And if I wanted to, I can do Command Palette here. So I can do star GraphQL open up a schema. So notice how there's color right here. It's green and blue. This is because of that plugin. So if you want that, you can grab that. Um, I talked about the move TypeScript plugin. The other thing is my code is going to be automatically moving around when I save. Um, and this is thanks to Prettier. Uh, so what this does is it formats my code. So if I make it ugly, so like, for example, I don't know. So like you see how this tab is over like that and it shouldn't be like that. So when I save it automatically moves it over for me. So that's what's going to be happening constantly while I'm coding is it's going to be a reformat to look nice and pretty. So to do that, I'm using Prettier. Um, and I think, I don't know if I have any preferences that are specific to this in like TypeScript, for example. Um, I do have um, the editor format on save to be true. So that's what runs prettier every time I save um, and then other than that I don't think I have any settings that make prettier work I think it just works by default um, and then Python doesn't matter for this I am using the TSLint plugin so this is uh, for TSLint of course uh, to get to work with Visual Studio Code and you'll see like little things um, imports or whatnot are not working so I got rid of that and we pop up I guess this is a TypeScript one uh, I can't think of any linting things but basically you'll lint your files and you'll see stuff uh, this is one you're going to want to use because we're going to be using TSLint uh, and then lastly Vim so I don't know you probably if you're not aware uh, you probably see me kind of just like moving around here with keys so JJJKKKK to move around um, this is using Vim and I'm using the Vim plugin so this is where a lot of my hotkeys um, and shortcuts are coming from uh, if you see me do, like just moving around the keyboard pretty quickly alright and then lastly I'm going to be using two um, projects that basically I've already created um, in this so I'm going to link them in the description below and then also I did a video on them if you want to see how they're made but the first one is just a very simple it's a yarn workspace 
um, and we're just going to take uh, and I also built a GraphQL TypeScript server already and that's actually what this project is um, a boilerplate for it and I'm just going to link you guys to both of those and the first thing that we're going to be doing and I guess we'll be doing this tomorrow is uh, putting the GraphQL server boilerplate um, get to work with the yarn workspace um, so that's the first thing we'll be doing so you don't need to follow, watch the videos for those if you don't care you can just grab the code off of github which is what I'll be doing tomorrow um, other otherwise if you'd like to see how they're made I'll link the videos for both of those and yeah that's it so those are all the things you're gonna be seeing me do um, throughout the whole series um, and I'd recommend uh, again using Visual Studio Code and getting used to some of these things because uh, they help you get a lot more efficient uh, when you're coding and kind of just be able to pop all around and do a lot of different things. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching.